In an age of austerity and recession, with jobs at risk and people worried about how to make ends meet, Scotland needs more new businesses and fresh ideas. In Glasgow and in Ayrshire, more than 100 budding entrepreneurs have come together in a programme designed to nurture and accelerate their growth. Everything you do is intentional. You make the damn best pitch you can. This is a business accelerator, the scale of which has never been seen before in Britain. You've come into Entrepreneurial Spark. Why are you here? I'm here to become more of a businessman. Entrepreneurial Spark was set up by former police sergeant Jim Duffy and his co-founder, businessman Brian Maguire. Wow. It's a not-for-profit organisation designed solely to help entrepreneurs through those difficult early stages of setting up a new business. Close your eyes. I want to feel it. There is no money in the bank account yet and actual expenses are going on my personal credit card. I know this will work. Retailers are facing a problem. It's a $200 billion pain in the ass. These entrepreneurs come from all walks of life, each with their own definition of success. The master plan is to build something big, have lots of success, buy a yacht, sail around the world, and then start all over again. Well, basically what I want you to do is, I want you to get my hair cut. <laughs> okay, right. good. I mean, I don't have a penny. This isn't a game show. This is real life. This is business in the raw. And look, we've even got our own pens. I mean, how posh is that? But with a third of all startups failing within their first three years, can this initiative really make a difference? What's your profit in year one? What's my profit in year one? See, woof, you should have it off the top of your head. I'm focusing on you, Mark. What the fuck are you going to do? I'm scared. <laughs> I've been working on it for two years to get the foundations as solid as I can. Yeah. And I'm not going to fuck it. I'm <laughs> all my cards are on the table. I'm, I'm all in. So, yeah. This has to work, and it will work. The definition of entrepreneur, wow. There's so many definitions of entrepreneur. For me, I have the simple definition. If I think I am one, I am one. The first eSpark Centre, or hatchery as Jim calls it, was opened in the Gorbals in early 2012. A second hatchery in Ayrshire followed soon afterwards. Every few months, potential candidates, or chicklets as Jim calls them, are invited to the hatcheries where they pitch their ideas to Jim and his dedicated team of enablers. How can we help you in here? Don't know. <laughs> I'd be hoping you'd tell me that. <laughs> That's brilliant. The business idea is important, but it's not the only criteria for entry to the hatchery. Anybody can come up with an idea, but can you actually turn that idea into a reality? You know, the idea might look great, but you meet the person and it's never going to happen. There is limited space within each intake, and the candidates have to be whittled down to a final few. What do you do to switch off? I don't. Definitely loved them, loved their attitude. You liked them because you saw the entrepreneurial grafter. Does it, what, what was the story? Yeah. I like that idea on paper. She was brilliant. Best of the night. One chicklet already well into their eSpark adventure is 44-year-old Steve Broadfoot. <laughs> Steve's a former tour manager who's travelled the world with some of Scotland's top bands. His time on the road, surrounded by loud music, was the inspiration for his wearable and practical ear protection product. What I'm doing is, is attaching earplugs to lanyards. Steve was making the products by hand, but now he's found a local manufacturer in Paisley. What he doesn't have yet is a name. We'll get your thoughts on it so that okay. I just lay out my ideas and my thought process just a bit more clearer than what right. I sent on email. Branding is an essential part of launching any new product, and Steve's recruited graphic designer peers to develop an image for his company. I would, I would love to go away today and kind of have like a final three, let's say, names that we can kind of push forward so that I can get a feel for what how you see the brand being. The kind of line I've gone down so far with the two words is like ear, here. 
ear shells or lug shells or something like that. Shell lugs or shell lugs. Lugs, you know, Scottish lugs, so lug plugs works yeah. quite well. So it's very much like you trying to name your child, basically, with Stevie. Um, you know, it's as precious as naming your own child. It's something very personal uh, for Steve. Frustratingly, just as Piers leaves, Steve makes up his mind. I'm thinking just like do lug plugs and run with it. I like it, to be honest, the reason why I like it is because it's Scottish. Scotland has traditionally been well represented in the food industry, and at eSpark there's no shortage of chiclets with food-based ideas. There's chocolatier Jackie Wynn. It's a passion that I have. When people get a gift, there's nothing more than I love when they say, that's amazing, I love that chocolate, because that's something I've made. Then there's 43-year-old dog lover Chris Lautet. She's developing a range of natural dog treats after discovering what ingredients go into some of the products currently on the market. The manufacturers use things like head, feet, feathers, wool, cancerous tissue and tumours. Is that the kind of things that you want to be feeding your dog? The treats are suitable for all dogs, especially those with sensitive tummies. I actually made 11,000 of these little cookies and that was a trial with 100 dogs. I wouldn't wish to do that every week. One eSpark foodie who's well on the way to getting his product to market is 33-year-old Donnie McLean. With the help of a renowned nutritionist, Donnie has invented the world's first nutritionally balanced pizza. So what we've done is what I call health by stealth. Everyone knows they should be eating a balanced diet, but we're just making it easier by doing it with a product that they're likely to eat. Very quickly, Donny managed to secure deals with two of the big four supermarkets and outsourced manufacture to the Edinburgh pizza makers Cosmo. Some teething problems with upscaling the recipe for Asda's first big order gave Donny cause for concern. But they managed to turn the order around. A bit of a roller coaster. Five hours of hard graft amongst all the team at the factory. So, yeah, we're on track and if anything, it's, it's better than it probably was before. It's an exciting time and a major achievement for Donny. Today is the first time he'll get to see his pizzas on supermarket shelves. Should be just then here. Ah. <laughs> Oh, did she see? So yeah. you balanced. It's a big section, you can see. There's only three other brands, and they're all. The budget is huge, and um, we've managed to do it on a shoestring so far. Obviously, we have to make sure that we do sell them to keep them <laughs> in here, but it's definitely um, exciting. A week later, it's the official launch, and Donny has an unusual idea to help with promotion. He's commissioned an ice sculpture to attract people's attention. The ice sculpture is certainly pulling in the crowds, but people don't normally buy until they try. Pizzas, they give you everything you need, all the vitamins and minerals, high in fiber, high in protein. Unlike other pizzas on the market, it's low in salt, so we've replaced the salt in the base with seaweed. Seaweed? Yeah. I've tried to re-help as much as I can, and that was nice, so if it's healthy and nice at the same time, then it's a winning combination, isn't it? It was delicious. <laughs> Crummy. Mum, can we have it for our lunch? It tastes real, this is what he said. If we like this one, obviously we'll be buying more. I'm hoping I'm going to have a nice tea. And if it tastes nice, we'll come back and get another one. Donny and his colleague Katie have been working together tirelessly over the last few months, and their relationship has developed into something more than just business. I know it's been a long journey, I guess, to get here, but I think it's the hard work has just started. We're not going to sit back. People are buying it. Right? Put your feet up, Nick. No, it's fine. There's big plans, lots of 
work to do, but it's all positive stuff. In Ayrshire, at the East Bart West Coast Hatchery, there's another batch of chicklets with big ideas. 35-year-old Mark Sherville makes a living as a golf pro, giving lessons to both kids and adults. His new company, To Do Sport, is developing a long-term athletic programme, combining the discipline of martial arts with the notion that to become really proficient in any given sport, you should put in at least 10,000 hours of training. His ambitious plans include launching his programme online and the opening of a state-of-the-art golfing academy. <laughs> he had been looking at this old hangar as a potential site, but the renovation costs proved to be too much. Undeterred, Marx identified another potential location that's part of a regeneration scheme in Irvine and comes with some interesting funding incentives. So what's going to be there? That's going to be our range. No way. Yeah. 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 That's going to be our range. We've got beyond the fence to the other fence. Wow. Yeah. Love yeah. it, mate. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, you can see through there. We're going to have the smash zone concept down this end. Some smashing golf balls here. Are you going to try and create the next Andy Money for golf? Oh, yeah. I'm going to work my nuts off. I think it's got great potential. It comes to two things. You, as your entrepreneur, your mindset, yeah. your determination, you've already showed that you're, you haven't just let this go because you could have gone away weeks and weeks ago and you're going to say, fuck that. I think you will see this through, but the next big hurdle you've got is get the investment. If you don't get the investment, it's not going to happen. Mark's already found a potential investor who's been impressed by his energy and coaching philosophy. Here's the plan. Here's the fit out. Here's how much it's going to cost. Here's how I'm going to run it for the first two years, my operating costs and some models of, of income coming in. Here's the sponsorship and all the opportunities that are going to open up as a result of it. And here's how I would hope to exploit them. And here's how I'm going to manage my life. And once we do that, we will to see the gaps. So that when you go to your investor, you've de-risked the plan. Woo! Woo! Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you've made good progress. Oh, mate, right. it's, uh, it's coming together. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Mark has worked with some of the world's top golfers, but never run his own business before. I'm a tracksuit manager. I love getting my boots on and getting out on the pitch and getting down and getting dirty. And I struggled. I looked at profit and loss accounts and all that, and it was just absolute gobbledygook to me. His time in eSpark has really helped to shape that side of his game. Yo, this is to do sport, and we are changing the way sport is coached and learned. To help him grow as an entrepreneur, eSpark has given Mark the opportunity to win a place on an intensive entrepreneurial training course at the world-renowned Babson College near Boston. <laughs> to book his seat on the plane, Mark needs to pitch his business to a discerning panel of senior bankers who are sponsoring the trip. So we've piloted the programme with 28 children starting, average spend of £35 per month. We're now at over 200 children on the programme. How do you differentiate then and get them to really buy into your energetic philosophy? So I sat down on a table like this and put 62 sports down on a piece of paper. And out of those 62 sports, there's only really a handful of primary and secondary movement patterns. So if we can educate those movement patterns, then once they get to the specialisation years, they're going to have a real strong foundation. And, and the, the feedback that we have had from, from the retention through the colour grading system. They love that. The kids buy into that. They're inspired by that. Okay, good, thank you. What, what sort of facilities do you have? <coughs> where, where do you do all of this? Currently, I mean, I come from the beach this morning, West Kilbride Beach at quarter to eight this morning. I had three boys down there at 14, 15 years of age before school. So I work on the beach, I work at the golf clubs, but I'm currently looking at, at taking Centre One in North Ayrshire. In Scotland, we need indoor space. So if we can produce a really good indoor centre that's loaded up with great technology and education, educate our children in this process. So, join us and be a game changer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Mark's energetic pitch seems to have impressed the panel. He'll have to wait to find out if he's won a potentially game-changing place at the American College. Morning, everybody. Hey, how are you all doing? 
Mark was one of the first intake at the East Park West Coast Hatchery. Today it's the turn of a new batch of chicklets to begin their entrepreneurial journey. Leading the introductory session is East Park co-founder Brian Maguire. How do you know if your business is going to work? How do you know if your great idea is going to fly? One of the new companies hoping that their idea will literally fly is Coolside. David and Michael met at university, studying engineering. Since graduating, they've been developing the prototype for PowerNap, their new sleep-on-the-go travel device. This is Harry Coolsaw, the third part of Coolside. Um, we bought him about three months ago, and this is actually the first proper use of him that we found. Today, they're at home, working on the ISS, or internal support system. So this is the, this is the last one here, the previous model. If you're looking at the design, once the ISS is ready, it will be placed in a specially designed padded scarf to make it more comfortable for the traveller. It's a simple idea, but those are often the best. David and Michael are hoping that Power Nap will prove to be a neat alternative to the cumbersome travel pillows already available. They've had some encouraging news. Through contacts made at an eSpark event, an airport retailer based in Holland is interested in stocking it. Yeah, it would just be a great stepping stone, basically. It would allow us to really test the product on obviously a vast audience. These guys are based throughout Europe, but also it would be a gateway to America. It could be the break we need, so fingers crossed. eSpark was set up to help the chicklets to realise their ideas and stimulate a business renaissance in Scotland. The hatcheries in Glasgow and Ayrshire are a start, but Jim wants to expand into the rest of Scotland and perhaps further afield. In the meantime, people from other parts of the country are having to travel. One of the chicklets making a big commute for the East Park experience is 40-year-old Vicky Brock. So here in Inverness we have my lovely house and my lovely garden and my lovely view. And in Glasgow I have my lovely travel lodge. On special occasions I have a premiere in, but Cumbernauld Travel Lodge or Brayhead Travel Lodge has been home from home for the last nine months. Vicky is a self-confessed analytics geek who's worked with major corporations including Google and Tesco. Seven years ago she set up her own successful market research company. As an entrepreneur, I think your brain has to be wired a little bit differently. It doesn't mean to say you can't learn it, but I think you have got to have a slightly different attitude to risk. Like all good business ideas, Vicky's new venture, Clear Returns, aims to solve a real-life problem. Product returns cost e-commerce retailers billions of pounds every year. Vicky's idea is to build a piece of intelligent software that will predict which products are most likely to be returned. It's a pain in the neck to keep buying and returning things, especially from online. Can we forecast returns? And yes, we can, and we're getting better and better and better at doing that. Vicky has huge ambitions and wants to build an enterprise that tackles the problem on a global scale. In eSpark, she's assembled a team of mathematicians, retail gurus and software developers. She's also taken on an intern, 21-year-old fashion and business graduate, Ellie Turner. I think Vicky's a really, really good boss. She knows that I'm there for the experience and I think she's a really like, approachable person. She's become a, f a friend really more than a boss. That's maybe another reason why startups are s such a good place to get experience because it's a kind of collaborative effort between you. I've got to create a job to keep her in our business because the business needs her. She's done that very clever thing of making herself invaluable to me very quickly. Vicky has recently been shortlisted for a major international pitching competition, the final of which is in New York City. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How is one? How is two? Being first to market is critical for Vicky, so she needs to raise some money quickly. The competition is a great opportunity to get in front of some serious American investors. There's a dress rehearsal, then a tour of Facebook, then a investor private dinner. They're the only non-US company left in the competition, so getting the pitch right is critical. 
Right, okay, folks. Hello, I'm Vicky, this is Ellie, and we want to prove to you how clear returns will save e-commerce retailers billions. One in three garments bought online is sent back. Globally, this is a $200 billion pain in the ass that nobody's tackling. Returns are a pain for customers. We shoppers know that. But as these trash bags of returns show, it leaves retailers' profits in tatters. It's a strong start from the confident duo, but Jim has spotted a potential problem. Big problem. Mm -hmm. You need to stop talking like a Scot, and you really, it's so broad, because you're you quite broad. A lot of them are going to struggle with that, especially with a microphone system. You're going to have to maybe talk a little bit like that, put a bit of something on, or English. Mm -hmm. I think they might miss a bit. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Another team preparing for an important pitch is Coolside. When you prepare for something properly, and you know that you know everything, then before you go in, you need to decide that you're going to win. This is from uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War, which is like a 2,000-year-old book, and it's kind of battle strategy. Yeah, bring it. That's good. <laughs> we should really kind of go, good way. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today to pitch for £28,000 of debt funding from Youth Business Scotland. Michael's doing the pitch today. We tossed a coin and uh, last night in rehearsals he nailed it, so looking forward to the same thing happening today. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little bit nervous, but I am excited. I'm looking forward to it. And it'll be interesting to see what they think about marketing strategy and what they think about the product. This is so important for us to get this money uh, at this stage, and it would accelerate us by probably five months. But more than that, it would be a huge boost to our confidence. Time check. 10 Let's go. Yep. Old trombone lungs are coming in handy. This is the competition. One of many. Kind of looks like a toilet seat round your neck. Yeah. Nice to meet you. So, quick introduction. Uh, I'm Michael and this is David. We are the founders of Coolside. Um, we make travelling comfortable. Coolside have solved a problem that's been annoying us all for years. How to sleep well on long haul journeys. From market research, we found that more than half of all travellers struggle to sleep on planes. Unfortunately for travellers, every travel pill in the market is useless. They provide very little comfort, very little support. Luckily, Coolside have invented and patented PowerNap, the first sleeping aid on the market that solves all these issues. So why is PowerNap so much better? Well, it provides more comfort, more support. It packs small, it looks fashionable as well. It's a solid pitch from Michael, but the boys are concerned about what the panel thought of their financial projections. I don't think it was that bad. I, don't think that we, was, I thought we did quite well. Yeah. I think you absolutely nailed the pitch. Nailed it. They'll have to wait to find out whether or not they've been successful. With banks still reluctant to lend and investors demanding big chunks of equity for their money, raising finance to get their business off the ground is a major challenge for the Chicklets. It's an issue that Jim is working hard to address. Getting the fund round entrepreneurial spark and startup entrepreneurs in Scotland is the, is the last piece in the jigsaw. Two people this week have left jobs, They've walked out in their jobs to be an entrepreneur full time. And having that little bit of oxygen, it's life or death. So I want to just get some funding round it in a different way. Stick a million pounds aside and give 20 to 30,000 pound grants to, to high calibre entrepreneurs who are willing to give it a go. I want to pull that off as fast as I can, and that's, I'm really pushing hard, pushing everybody hard. Back in town, for Michael and David, the wait is over. They're about to find out whether their pitch was successful. Not getting this loan would put back the launch of their product by months. OK, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Basically the answer is 
yes. But what they need to see is exactly how much funding you need. And yeah. they just weren't sure that they really got that from the cash flow. They didn't try too much in the numbers. They just thought, let's sort that out separately. It's getting a wee bit emotional there. That was as well. <laughs> Bar crossing a few T's and dotting a few I's. We just got 28 grand. That's awesome. That's a great feeling. That's like, a great that's, feeling. that's a lot of money. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's going to kickstart our business. Save the say we're going to get absolutely smashed. <laughs> it's a great result for the youthful entrepreneurs, but low interest loans like this one aren't readily available to everyone. The Manhattan Center is one of New York's most celebrated concert venues. Over the years, it's played host to star performers like Judy Garland, Leonard Bernstein and David Bowie. Tomorrow, it's the turn of Clear Returns to take center stage. Vicky and Ellie will be pitching their socks off in an auditorium packed with investors and potential customers attending the Woman 2.0 pitch competition. It's the biggest room of yeah. ever seen. That is scary. <laughs> I don't expect it to be this big. I feel like I'm in a chorus line, actually. Yeah. <laughs> For 21-year-old Ellie, it's an incredible but daunting opportunity. She'd been worried about how her Scottish accent would go down with the American audience. We've timed it so that we've got plenty of time at the end for me to slow down and pronounce properly, so I, I don't think it'll be a problem. No. As long as I pronounce my T's, then they'll come up to me at the end and say, I had no idea what you were saying, I didn't understand a word, and I'll be like, oh well, yeah. too late now. <laughs> it's OK, just sign here. <laughs> but first, there's a more immediate issue to deal with. The mission tonight is to find a dress for the presentation tomorrow. The one I had was kind of blending into the background a wee bit, so the plan is to visit Forever 21, Macy's, Bloomingdale's, find the perfect dress. If we're going to find it anywhere, we'll find it in New York City, I think. The bright lights of the big city are a reminder of how far Ellie has come in the last few months since graduating. Generally still hasn't even sunk in that this is my first job and a month after, two months after I've started that I'm here pitching to a thousand people. I try not to think about that too much. <laughs> when I first started the internship, my idea was that I wanted to set up my own business. And Vicky's spoken to me about it, that if I was to set up my own kind of fashion label, that she'd help me. So I think that would be something I would definitely want to do with my exit money from Clear Returns when we make millions. <laughs> I think Vicky's master plan is global domination and she says that quite often. But I think it's completely possible, as long as we can prove the concept, and we know that we can, then I don't see any reason why Vicky won't take it global domination scale. That would be good to be involved in that, definitely. The next morning, it's back down to business. Clear Returns is the only non-US company left in the competition, and winning one of the cash prizes would be a real shot in the arm. There's also the potential that somewhere in the room there might be an investor who could help Vicky achieve her ambition of taking the company truly global. There is a lot at stake with this. We haven't put the house on the line yet. Doesn't mean we wouldn't. It's the fact that there is no money in the bank account yet and actual expenses are going on my personal credit card. Everybody's existing kind of on air at the moment, but people do need to eat at some point. I know this will work. I really do need a pee so badly. So I'm going to introduce our first company. Our first company is Clear Returns. Clear Returns. Retailers are facing a problem, returned product. It's a $200 billion pain in the ass. And apparel retailers, they've got this worst of all. One in three garments sold online is sent back. Let's give you a few examples. Katie spots the perfect dress online. Classic black, elbow length sleeves. She has to have it, so she buys it. A few days later, it arrives, but wait, it has no sleeves. It's a bit more Kim Kardashian than Katie Holmes. 
Disappointed, she sends the dress back and badmouths the retailer in the process. That is a real example from our first test with a retailer. Our algorithm spotted that mistake, caused 500 returns and cost $20,000. We gave them the opportunity to fix this. Then there's Heather. She's very sneaky. If she's got a big night coming up, she buys her outfit online, she goes out, wears it, had a great time, and then she sends it all back on Monday. Time and time again. Clear returns can spot the signs of this. Now, next time Heather wants to borrow one of the expensive dresses, she might find it's out of stock. Or she may simply get a very friendly phone call from customer services asking her if everything is OK. Now, there hasn't been an effective solution to this problem for e-commerce until now. Clear returns is early stage, but we've got traction. We have a sales pipeline with retailers approaching us from the US, Europe, Singapore and Mexico. And our next fantastic test customer is right here in the room. Give us a wave, pinks and greens. Hey! hey. <laughs> this is the fashion and retail capital of America. Let's start to service shoppers better so that they can be returning to retailers for all the right reasons. Thank you from Clear Returns, intelligently protecting profits. Back in Glasgow, there's another chicklet with high hopes for her tech-based idea. When 32-year-old Leah Hutchin lost her job as a magazine editor, it gave her the time to develop a business idea that had been on her mind for quite a while. The result was Appointed.com, an online service that makes it easier to book appointments at salons and spas. Beauty salons? Yeah, beauty okay. salons, hairdressers. Leah is attempting that very entrepreneurial thing of trying to sell her product before it actually exists. She's never done sales before, so she's getting some last minute tips from fellow chicklet Marie Rogers of Total Sales Solution. Now you better become a salesperson because if people don't buy your product, you won't have a business. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm waiting for a first date or something. It's a bit like nerve wracking. She's very nice. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> Are you okay? Leah's first sales meeting is with Glam Candy, two women who've set up a makeup academy and are potentially interested in Leah's yeah, product. So are you going to show us an example of that? Now? I yeah. will show you um, the booking portal here, Jamie. Um, Sorry, I don't know why this isn't now coming up. It's not a good start. The Wi-Fi isn't working, so Leah will have to do her sales pitch without a demo. So how many people have you got using the booking system just now? You're my first proper appointment today. Oh. This is very exciting. When fully operational, Leah's service will allow consumers to browse many different salons from one site. For the salons, it offers useful business management tools to help connect with their customers. That's really what we've aimed to do, mm -hmm. is to free up your time. You didn't set out in this business to sit there and do admin, and you'd be able to plan all of the emails that are going to go out, exactly who they're going to, what date they're going, and just get those all scheduled. And that's only a tiny bit of what we can do. We can yeah. do loads more. <laughs> that's really that, good. So. Can we do that now? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proper paying customers. <laughs> this is like on my wedding day, the photographer had to say to me, Leah, will you stop grinning? And I was like, I just can't. So we've gone from first date to wedding day straight away. I'm going to become a total sales addict. Leah has been trialling the software for a few months now, and today she's come to meet Anna Mather at her salon in Gifford near Edinburgh to see how she's been getting on with it. I've been speaking to all of my clients about using Appointed and they're so excited about being able to go online and look at the website and book appointments and they just think it's a brilliant idea. I'm uh, quite looking forward to just dumping the paper book now. Yeah. How long is it going to be before we can have the appointments booked through the internet? Through the internet. Mm. Literally. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I want to say we could do it now. Because, yeah, we could do it. It's there. It all speaks to each other. It all works. It depends kind of how brave you want to be. If you want to... No, I don't think we should. <laughs> like... Without a background in IT, Lee has underestimated how long it takes to build software. She's desperate to recruit a full-time tech support person who can manage any unexpected problems, 
but she's already invested all her life savings and doesn't have any money to pay wages. Back across the pond, the winners of the Women 2.0 pitch competition are due to be announced. I would like to thank all our live and also online judges. For Vicky and Ellie, getting some cash without having to give away equity would really make a difference. And we're going to start with the People's Choice Award. That finalist team is Shandri and Peggy. Back to the hero. We're really excited to announce um, the winner today of the L'Oreal Women in Digital Award, and it goes to Citizen Me, Rachel Brooks. Sadly, none of the prizes go Vicky and Ellie's way, but they console themselves with the thought that they've made some really useful contacts, not least their first American client. We didn't win, but we delivered what we came to do. One of the things that was really interesting was framing that whole question about do you take investment or not. If we take a small amount of money now, we're going to give away a heck of a lot for it. For us, investment isn't the thing we need just now. It's to build the customer base and prove ourselves before we need the money, really. It really consolidated down what this is all about. And for me, I did realise that it's about getting big, it's about building something amazing, it's this kind of global domination and I aspire to that and why not try and build that kind of business. Steve is also struggling for money, but help is at hand from a very willing lender, the Bank of Mum. Eugene Vincent, Eddie Cochran. The Beatles tour with Roy Orbison. Well, you were saying when you went to this, uh -huh. you, you couldn't actually hear them. No, you hear. Didn't, didn't hear a thing. That's what all this is about, is the uh -huh. difference is PAs have become bigger so everybody can hear. Yeah. But the problem is they're so, they're so loud. Uh -huh. Steve has recently been diagnosed with brain cancer. Mum Carol came out of retirement to help him financially with his new business idea. You know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do this. You contributed more than anybody because you basically kept me afloat for the last year. Setting up a new business has distracted them both from Steve's illness. That was one way I could help, it, it, and it was practical and it kept me focused. Steve is undergoing regular scans to check that the cancer is in remission. Uh, yeah. Stephen Bradfoot. Okay. Hey, cheers. And although things are looking positive, it's still a tough time for Carol. Once you get over the initial shock, which is horrific, it's it's like being in um, another a parallel world. You have your life, and then there's this other one that's suddenly been introduced while he's doing this and while I'm working and focusing on what I need to do, it keeps this other world at bay as if it doesn't exist, but it is still there. It's bury your head in the sand stuff. Somebody mentions the, mentions the word. I, I don't want anyone to want to hear it. I don't want it to go where it is. I don't. I just don't. Anybody with children knows that if your children are in pain, you're in pain. And it's as simple as that. And if I could swap, if I could take your pain, then I'll take your pain. I'll do this. Stephen is my only son. I can't contemplate my life without him in it. Despite his illness, Steve is making progress with his business. He sold his first 50 units to a drum school. Am I in a safe position here? Should I move back? Yeah, you've seen me play before, so... OK. He's been to Parliament to lobby the government for more action on hearing protection. It's not just music. It's anywhere there's loud noise. You walk into a construction site, where are your protection? What I can do is ask some parliamentary questions uh, about the regulations around this. 
and he's making a push into the local club scene. Today, visiting promoter Donald McLeod. Sorry, <laughs> Donald. How are you good? Not bad, you? Not bad at all. Thanks good for your time. You yeah, see? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Keeping well? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, what brings you in here? You've been around the rock scene for long enough? Yes, yes, it shows, yes, I know. The lines are there. <laughs> I'm well worn. How's your hearing? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah. Fall for that every time. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, no, no, it's there. It, it, it looks pr uh, fairly trendy. Would you be interested in maybe do a trial run of like 50 of them? We can, I can, you know, speak to you, get the garage logo. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. I'll get the uh, logos over to you. Brilliant. And, uh, I mean, the great thing about Donald as well is it's, it's, it's his company. He, you know, the buck stops with him and he makes the decisions. So I'll make up some samples over the Christmas period. So getting on and moving forward. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's December in Edinburgh and the Christmas sales season has begun in earnest. With shoppers aplenty, it's the perfect time to launch an innovative new product in one of the many bustling markets. And that's just what David and Michael are intending to do. It's the first time Power Nap, their new sleep on the go travel device, has been on show to the public. Do you travel much? No? I'll show you how good it looks. If it looks good in me, it's going to look good in you. <laughs> Your jawline. You look good. Are you single? You look so good. They're trialling the price at £24.99. Um, would rather you think about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that a lot of people are interested. A lot of people sometimes go, I'll oh, go ask my husband or I'll come back later type thing. After a slow start, Michael and David have honed their sales techniques. It's basically designed for a, you know, public transport as well. Yeah. If you fall asleep with this, it's really bad for your oh, neck. No, really bad for your neck. So we basically don't allow it with that product. Would you like one then? I'll, I'll package it up for you. Thank you very much. Because I do suffer from neck pains, trying that for a second, it seems to make a difference. He pitched it just right. He wasn't in your face. He was just no, there with the he product. Wasn't pushing it. And if you wanted to know about it, he would talk about it. I really liked him. I'm does I do business myself, and I thought he was really good. Cool. I shall get your black one then. To achieve my first sale, it felt absolutely awesome. So it was just like, holy! I, mean, I couldn't believe it. The thing that we've made something and people have bought it, class, absolutely class. In the box. The Power Nap launch is a success, and over the next four days, the boys sell more than 150 units. <laughs> Back in Glasgow, at the Eastpark offices, the mood is not quite so festive. It's been a tough few months for the Eat Balance team. Getting into the supermarkets was a great achievement, but staying there is proving much more of a challenge. Hi there, do you work in the frozen section? Um, I've noticed that there's zero stock for all three lines at the store, um, do you know what the problem is there? The pizzas are selling pretty well, but supplying to two of the big four supermarkets is a complex process. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Right. Cheers, bye. An active line. I don't even know what that means. Donnie and Katie are working around the clock to try and build some brand awareness and sell more pizzas. It's not fun. I've thrown everything that I have into it. Um, there's no sort of fallback. I don't have any savings left. Um, I have to make this work, or I'm going to have to sell my flat. In order to help people like Donnie through the bumpy first stages of their businesses, Jim's been lobbying the Scottish government for help. Now they've set aside a million pounds to create the Edge Fund competition. The challenge is for a hundred of Scotland's most promising new companies to pitch for a chance to make it through to the final round and win vital financial support. The, the competition's fierce and the bar set really high. For Donny, Vicky and Leah, winning an award of up to £50,000 could totally transform their businesses. And you're done. I've hit the point where there's, you know, no money in the business. Um, so, yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> Go home and have a good cry tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I think it's just everything coming out. <laughs> A week later, the 20 survivors arrive in the capital for a final round of pitching. There are 10 eSpark chiclets left in the competition, and Donnie, Vicky and Leah have all made it through. Getting through to this final has been amazing for my confidence. I've had some tough times recently and this would be a massive boost, not just financially, but um, mentally. The next bit is where we turn into a real business as opposed to a startup, and, and we actually have a future. <laughs> and I, you know, really know that I can't take anything for granted today because there's not enough money to go round. Good luck, good luck, good luck. You're going <laughs> to yeah. be great. Thank you guys. You're going to be great, yeah. man. On the judging panel are two of Scotland's top business people, a senior banker and officials from Scotland's two enterprise agencies. OK, Leah, get away. Hi, my name's Leah and I'm the founder of Appointed. Appointed is a groundbreaking business management software system for salons and spas. It connects salons with customers to drive profit. Now, the hair and beauty industry is packed... It's a no-nonsense start from Leah. Owners who are creative, but now the driven. clock is ticking. Our addressable market's around 6,000 salons, and we're confident we can reach 240 of those in year one to generate a turnover of 140,000. This increases to 560,000 in year two and a million in year three. <laughs> We want to utilise Edge Money to market our product and to add to our team, creating at least six positions over three years. So support appointed and support a whole industry of independent small businesses. <laughs> I really wished that would happen, so I was lucky. It's a perfectly timed pitch from Leah, but now she'll face the questions and the panel wants some clarity about her figures. And what kind of margin does that give you? Um, our margins are great on it. Um, obviously at the beginning we were spending a lot on business development and that sort of thing, but we, profit-wise, we're talking around 77,000 in year one, 370,000 in, in year two, and up to 750,000 in, in year three. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think it went as well as it could have done. I'm delighted that the pitch was on the three minute button because I just think it looks so rock and roll <laughs> it's just like you finish and it goes and so that was yeah the sweetest sound I've ever heard next up is Vicky not winning any of the prizes in New York was a major disappointment so she's hoping to do better on home soil boomerang one in three garments sold online comes right back so returns in cost curves that, incur costs that wipe out profit margins and that leave product out of stock when demand is at its peak. Uh, e uh, Clear Returns offers a solution. We're applying it's a shaky start from a normally unflappable Vicky. It went really badly. <laughs> it was the worst version of that presentation that I've done. The questions went fine and I hope I still made a good case, but in terms of the actual presentation, I somehow lost the ability to speak a complete sentence in the right order, which is quite bad when you're presenting. I don't know how this is gonna go, how it will pan out. Back in the den, Donnie's pitch is going well. The buyer and, and, and Tesco said this is one of the biggest innovations they've seen in the frozen section for 20 years. We're trying to get people questioning things, so, you would never think that a pizza was going to be good for you. It's always seen as a junk food. If I did win, it would make it a lot easier to continue because um, every penny's a prisoner at the moment. And if we can get this injection, it makes a huge difference. You cannot leave startup businesses and really high potential people to chance and just hope that they'll bubble away out there. You have to give them the ecosystem, you have to give them the oxygen in terms of the cash to do it, and then you have to support them after it with really good mentors. Because if you get them in the right path, there's absolutely nothing to stop them. One of the entrepreneurs bubbling away out there is Steve. 
He's persuaded some staff at Glasgow's busiest clubs to try out his new lug plugs. So the idea is, it's attaching the earplugs to a lanyard to make them a bit cooler and more convenient. So far, we've just been talking to people and people think it's a good idea, but it's not until you actually take it into clubs and into bars and actually talk to people that are going to be using it. It's just like headphones really here. That's it. You can think what they think, but uh, to actually find out from their mouth what they think is what it's all about. For Steve, lug plugs are more than a product, they're an essential part of modern life. A lot of people out there don't understand it, kids think their ears will toughen up. You know, if your ears are ringing, that's damage, and the more you expose yourself to it, they don't toughen up, it takes longer for the ringing to go, and eventually it doesn't go. At the end of the night, the bar staff are happy. Yeah, I'm glad I've got a pair of these. <laughs> And I could definitely tell like, the noise difference. When you wake up in the morning, your ears won't be ringing then. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve's made a new contact at a security firm with over a thousand door stewards, all of whom need ear protection. I think it should be a good product to use. You know? The Edge Fund Award ceremony has finally arrived. For Jim, it's the culmination of months of hard work, lobbying to provide more support for entrepreneurs. I'm just going to sit at the back and I'm just going to lap it all up and go woo 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 for the winners. <laughs> for some of his eSpark chiclets, it's a night that could totally shape their future, but there isn't enough money for everyone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the main event of the evening. Our first winner is Geraldine Abrahams from TWM Productions. With so much at stake, emotions are running high. The next Scottish Edge Fund winner provides online business management software for salons and spas. Scottish Edge Funding will allow them to hire a full-time member of staff to support the business. On technical issues, could I ask Leah Hutchin to come and receive an award of £30,000 from Scottish Edge Fund. This will be, I'll have somebody with me all of the time. It's going to make such a difference, it really is. Our 14th winner of the evening offers e-commerce and multi-channel retailers the chance to preserve as much of the basket value as possible post-sale. Please put your hands together and say well done to Vicky Brock of Clear Returns, who has awarded £30,000 from Scottish Edge Fund. It's going to go on selling, getting us out there, but first and foremost, it's going on people. <laughs> As the list of winners mount, Donnie's hopes are fading. Our final funding award of the evening goes to a business incorporated in 2010. Please put your hands together for our final funding winner of this evening, Donny McLean of Eat Balanced, who wins an award of £40,000 from Scottish Edge Fund. <laughs> as soon as Gordon said, and the penultimate yeah. prize, <laughs> and then they talk, started talking about another business, I was like, oh shit. We've achieved a lot in the last year, or year and a half. It's a, a real confidence boost and yeah, for you, morale boost, as well as a financial boost. So it's exactly what we were hoping for. <laughs> oh, done you. One of the most important aspects of eSpark, I think, is that collective environment of a bunch of entrepreneurs together all kind of on a really a similar emotional roller coaster. There's actually a huge amount of confidence and growing up, I think, that you do in that space. There is no way on this earth that I would have been in that final had it have not been for Spark. This last year has been 
without a doubt the best year of my life. I've gotten married, I've really put myself into my own business and really excited to see what comes next, I guess. But for Jim, there's no time to celebrate. The brand new Edinburgh Hatchery is opening its doors to another eclectic mix of people and ideas. What's it all about? It's all about the chiclets, the start-up entrepreneurs. My name is Melanie and my business is onestopshowshop.com. I am the chief executive of, I guess chief executive of Identity. My company is Eco Weddings UK. My name is Owen O'Leary and my business is O'Reilly. We buy, select and brand whiskey and we sell it around the world. I'm in manufacturing at the moment. I have an idea and I have a name. I'm writing a book. But as a solo entrepreneur, it's a kind of a lonely road. Success just seems to be so far away. I don't know what's in it for me. I would love to own a reasonably sized sort of studio space. We want to have uh, a couple of million users. All of a sudden a million doesn't sound like that big of a deal. You know, can there be more? Five years from now, I want to be a successful entrepreneur, whatever that means. <laughs> my ambition is to, to get down, and get my boots on, get in here. Now I want to see this place fill up with families. I want to see kids growing up in here, having something to do. Letting them fall in love with a sport and all the life skills and everything that brings with it. That would be a great, great success for me. One thing I said to myself was, I'm not going to call myself an entrepreneur until I make a sale. Now we've made a sale, so yeah. I'm kind of like, Maybe I'm one now. <laughs> to actually maybe come up with an idea and get affirmation from other people that, yeah, this is a good idea, let's do something about it. At least you feel as if you're making a contribution. I think everybody needs a reason to do stuff. So, yeah, interesting year. Hopefully it's going to be uh, interesting another couple of years and uh, enjoy the ride as long as I can. Everyone thinks, oh, entrepreneurship, oh, look at those people and they're selling a lot of money to become rich. No, it's hard. Big, jaggy periods, troughs and peaks to get to where they are, but they keep going all the time. It's about creating hungry, confident entrepreneurs that can go out there and make it happen. That's it.